She is beauty, she is grace, she'll bring you to Valhalla, the resting place. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of Valkyrie. As with most comic book characters, there are often different versions and reimaginings to a character's past. We've chosen to primarily focus on the storyline which unfolded in The Defenders Volume 1 Issues 4, 66-68, 107-109, and 2012's The Fearless Issues 4 and 12. Brunhilde, aka Valkyrie, was created by Marvel artist John Buscema and writer Roy Thomas, basing her on the Germanic and Norse mythological figure known as Brunhilde, the Shield Maiden. In the Marvel Universe, Valkyrie hails from Asgard and is a widely respected and honorable warrior. She was chosen by the Allfather, Odin, to be the leader of the Valkyrior, a group of Asgardian warrior goddesses riding on winged horses, with the purpose of carrying the souls of fallen warriors from the battlefields to the afterlife. In early issues, Valkyrie's origin is fraught with confusing storylines, since she's inhabited multiple human vessels. Even Valkyrie's first appearance in 1970's Avengers No. 83 is deceptive, as this Valkyrie is actually Amora the Enchantress posing as Brunhilde to create conflict between the female and male members of the Avengers. Our first encounter with the real Valkyrie happens in 1973's The Defenders issue No. 4, where the Enchantress finds herself imprisoned in the Dark Dimension. In order to escape, the Enchantress performs a ritual by combining the body of a mortal woman and fellow prisoner Barbara Norris with the soul of Brunhilde the Valkyrie. After helping Enchantress escape, Valkyrie, now inhabiting the body of a human woman, joins Doctor Strange's superhero team, the Defenders. Brunhilde the Valkyrie spent many years as an important member of the Defenders, where she learned to tolerate and admire her male teammates. In 1978's The Defenders No. 66, she plays an instrumental role both on the battlefield and behind enemy lines. Valkyrie is given a prophecy by the Three Fates, who foretell an Asgardian civil war and her death in battle. Becoming distraught, she decides to skip the battle part and go straight to Hell. She submits herself to the will of Hela, the goddess of death who actually has other plans for the fearless shield maiden. It turns out that Hela needs someone to lead the Valkyrior and fight against Olaris the Unmerciful, who wants the title of god of death for himself. The prophecy that Valkyrie sought to avoid is, in the end, coming true, and the civil war has already begun. During the battle, Brunhilde discovers her real body, remembers she's currently in the body of Barbara Norris, and is understandably about as confused as readers probably are at this point. Upon touching the body, Brunhilde is incapacitated, and the unconscious body awakens. It turns out that Brunhilde's real, immortal body is inhabited by the soul of Barbara Norris, who assumes the role of Valkyrie. Arbitrarily deciding that she wants to be a bad guy now, Barbara tricks the defenders into fighting for Olaris against Hela, because aside from their armor, both bodies look exactly the same because of plot convenience. As the battle rages on, Olaris is growing his army using the souls of dead mortals. Eventually, Brunhilde, still in Barbara Norris's body, awakens and makes a daring escape, fighting a dragon along the way. Possessing a strong army of human souls, Olaris rallies against them to fight Hela, claiming that she is the one responsible for their deaths. When Brunhilde reappears, the defenders realize that they've been fooled by the fake Valkyrie and quickly join the real one to fight on Hela's side. Olaris is defeated, and as punishment, Barbara Norris, still in Brunhilde's body, is sent to the underworld of Nilfheim. It turns out that the death Brunhilde witnessed in the Fate's prophecy was actually Barbara in Brunhilde's body, because apparently she can't tell them apart either. But wait, there's more! In 1982's The Defenders number 107, the defenders defeat a group of demons, but Valkyrie is shot dead following the battle. After seeing Valkyrie's ghost, the team holds a seance, believing that her soul is caught between worlds. As it turns out, because Valkyrie was killed in the body of Barbara Norris, while her immortal body was still condemned to the underworld, her spirit got understandably confused and remained between the mortal world and the afterlife, obviously. Thus, with no body to inhabit, Valkyrie's spirit became trapped between life and death. Just as the defenders resolve to retrieve her immortal body from the underworld, Enchantress traps Valkyrie's spirit in the enchanted sword, Dragonfang. Enchantress uses Brunhilde's soul as leverage, demanding that the defenders do her bidding and help her conquer the cosmic being known as love. While trapped in the sword, Valkyrie recalls an old memory involving the Enchantress, in which, following Odin's orders, the Valkyrior are dispersed. The Enchantress comes along and promises new opportunities for the idle Valkyrie. Valkyrie quickly realizes their conflict of interest and confronts the evil Enchantress. Enchantress reveals that she's been siphoning pieces of Valkyrie's life essence for her own nefarious purposes, thus explaining how Valkyrie ultimately wound up in a mortal's body. 
Back in the present day, Enchantress, deciding to kill Valkyrie once and for all, has stolen Valkyrie's real body along with Barbara's spirit from the underworld and plans to destroy them both. The plan backfires when Love takes pity on Barbara Norris and frees her soul, taking it to a higher plane of existence. Now that the body is empty, Brunhilde's soul takes control of it and fights the Enchantress. Finally, after years of being under Enchantress's mercy, Valkyrie gets her revenge by having Enchantress's soul trapped in the globe of souls. Ain't karma a bitch, I guess. Valkyrie has spent much of her comic book career flying under the radar. While she has spent some time as one of Captain America's secret Avengers, one of her most defining moments came in the 2011 Marvel storyline, Fear Itself, where she is once again forced to choose between her loyalty to Odin and her duty to the mortal world of Earth. Valkyrie is commanded by Odin to collect powerful Asgardian relics called the Serpent's Weapons before the Red Skull's daughter, Sin, can use them to destroy Earth. In a final stand against Sin's super weapon, the Final Sleeper, she is killed with a single blow. After spending only a brief time in the afterlife, she is contacted by Doctor Strange, who urges her to return to the realm of the living. If only I could, am I right? Valkyrie comes back to Earth with the Valkyrior and successfully dismantles the Final Sleeper and ultimately foils Sin's plans. In the aftermath of Fear Itself, Valkyrie assembles and leads her own team of defenders in 2013's The Fearless Defenders. You'd think that someone as strong and fearless as Valkyrie would feature more prominently in the Marvel Universe. Still, with her winged horse, long braids, and boob-plated body armor, she casts a memorable image. Are you a fan of Marvel's premiere Shield Maiden? For more entertaining and memorable videos published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Valkyries! Warriors! Your seats in Valhalla are promised! Protect Odin with your lives!